Hi all, welcome to the part 2 session of discussing and understanding the important statistics interview questions. So let's get started. So the first question, what is the first measure of business problem and how it is related to normal distribution? So the first measure of business problem or uh, like mainly we try to go with measures of central tendency or central value or location. So they are the mean, median and mode. So when we relate it with normal distribution, in normal distribution, the mean, median and mode will be equal. That is all the values will be same. And uh, an another important point is that the mean will be zero and standard deviation will be equal to one. So this is uh, how the relation it is more related with normal distribution moving to the next question what is normalization and standardization so normalization means we are trying to rescale or we are trying to convert the value in a same range for example it could be like 0 to 1 or 0 to 100 or 0 to 10 so suppose if we take the example like height so the unit is in centimeter right and if you take weight it is in kgs so both are different units both variables are in different units so we can convert them into a same unit or same range using normalization so the most widely used normalization is min max normalization so the formula is x minus x minimum divided by x maximum minus x minimum whereas if you come to standardization or it is called as Z score normalization. So here we try to rescale the data with a with mean zero and standard deviation one. So that is nothing but the normal distribution curve, right? So normal distribution curve it ranges the mean will be zero and standard deviation will be one, and the total area will be equal to one. So if we have a range of value like 160 to 100, so for sorry 160 to 180, then if we want to plot them in the graph so what we do we try to apply this z score normalization and based on the, uh, and after that we try to uh, plot them like mean will be zero and um, the other values will be towards the left and right so we will try to plot a curve with the help of this z score normalization okay and moving to the next question what is the difference between concurrence interval and prediction interval so firstly, we will understand what is prediction interval. So prediction interval tells how confident we are that the individual predicted value lies in the region of upper and lower limit. That is called as prediction interval. So you can see the formula y hat y hat h is a predicted value plus or minus t alpha divided by 2 comma n minus 2 is a degrees of freedom into root of mean square error 1 plus 1 by n plus xh minus x by the whole square divided by summation xi minus x by the whole square next is the confidence interval it tells how confident we are that the calculated value lies in the region that is 95 percent or 99 percent confidence so the formula is x bar plus or minus t alpha into s by square root of n that is nothing but the standard error s by square root of n is nothing but the standard error so both confidence interval and prediction interval are more or less um, they are meaning the uh, they are more or less similar but a slight difference prediction interval will tell the particular predicted interval value uh, range like whether it is uh, what is the range in upper and lower interval whereas confidence interval will tell how confident that this value lies in the region like whether it is 95 percent confident or 99 percent confident yeah and moving to the next question what are the types of sampling in statistics so generally there are four important types of sampling first one is simple random sampling so in this we try to take these samples randomly with equal chance or equal probability so there will be no uh, human bias as such and next one is stratified sampling so here we convert the heterogeneous group into homogeneous um, stratum and then we pop and upon that we perform the simple random sampling next is cluster sampling we will sample by group that is called as cluster sampling and fourth one is systematic sampling in systematic sampling we try to sample with equal interval like, like 
0 to 10, 10 to 20, etc. So that is called a systematic sampling. Yeah, I'm moving to the next question. What is the difference between point estimate and interval estimate? So point estimate gives a particular value. Uh, like, uh, for example, like method of moments, maximum likelihood estimator. So they are the point estimators. Whereas interval estimate gives a range of values. So like 10 to 20, 20 to 30, etc. So in an interval. So that is called as interval estimate. And we mostly prefer with the interval estimate. So yeah, and moving to the next question, how can you release histogram with PDF? So histogram involves both discrete data as well as continuous data, whereas PDF, that is probability density function, it involves only the continuous data. Next question, why are distributions getting used and the significance of distributions in data? So distributions are getting used because as we know that statistics on a whole it relies on probability so we try to find the distribution by uh, with the frequency like based on the frequency we try to find the distribution and plot the graph so we uh, so we can find that different kinds of data will follow different distribution suppose a uh, rare events a uh, rare occurrence of events based on data that follows the poisson distribution like number of mistakes in a good book, number of accidents and errors. So they are kind of a rare event. So they follow the poison distribution. They are the discrete kind of distribution. And like similarly, like heavy tail distribution, heavy tail distributions are the distribution which follow the Pareto's principle. Similarly, like normal distribution, normal distribution are those which um, mostly follows the real life data. So um, with the help of distributions, we can more uh, understand or we can more Study the data so that is the use and significance of distributions in data and moving to the next question what are the small sample and large sample test so small sample test means the sample size will be less than 30 for some of the tests are like t-test tf-test and chi-square test whereas large sample tests are if the sample size is greater than and equal to 30 they are the large sample test so, uh, for example like z test Moving to the next one, what is ANOVA or analysis of variance? So this is an important uh, question or important concept to understand. So ANOVA, it is an application of F-test. So why, what, why do we use ANOVA? So ANOVA is used to test the equality of two or more population means. That is, we have a population we have two or more population and we want to find whether their means are equal or not so for that uh, we try to use ANOVA so here we are um, trying to check the means but we should not uh, confuse that uh, because the name is like ANOVA analysis of variance we are not finding the variance we are actually we are trying to find the mean right so next final one what is the lag in time series forecasting and how can we choose the optimum lag length so lag means it is the number of previous time periods so we are taking into consideration so for example uh, from the example we can understand it in a better way like if we want to forecast these uh, uh, sales for a next week then we try to use the previous one week sales so that is like t minus one so it is one lag if we use t minus la past uh, previous two weeks it is called as two lag that that is t, we represent as t minus two right so if it is a uh, previous one week then it is one lag if it is two weeks then it is two lag if it is three weeks then it would be three lag so based on the number of time period we are taking previous time period we are taking that is called as lag in time series so uh, mostly we go with lag because um, usually if we um, think uh, always the present will be depend on the past so based on the past only we are uh, predicting the present right uh, we are predicting the future so yeah so that is the main use of lag so always we should consider the lag in time series so how can we choose the optimum lag value that is using by using AIC and BIC value we can choose the optimum lag length yeah and that's all for this uh, thanks for uh, watching and please do like share and subscribe thank you